challenge. So let me continue to, uh, to circle, focus on the shots we can get you, and try to pass on more specifics as we get it here, just um, around the vicinity of Austin East High School. Okay, thanks, Pete. Check uh, back in a few minutes. Yeah, we appreciate you continuing to fly and keep us up to date on the situation there. Um, we should note Knox County Sheriff's Office also flying. Uh, we had for a period of time there wondered whether that implied that they were searching for somebody. Uh, but I did get off the phone with the uh, spokesperson for the Knox County Sheriff's Office. They say that they believe the scene is secure and that there is no active search for anyone. Rather, that helicopter is flying simply as added support to crews who are on the ground. So just another measure of security, uh, eyes from above, being able to watch this situation. We are learning from the superintendent of Knox County Schools um, that the situation is secure and that students who were not involved have been reunited with their families. So that would explain why we're not seeing a lot of activity at that reunification site when Pete Michaels was showing us the site from the air. Didn't look like there was much activity there. It would make sense now that we're hearing from the superintendent of schools that all students have been reunified with their families, except for the students who may have been involved. And that's kind of one of those uh, phrases that makes you stop and say, hmm, what are we implying with that statement? The superintendent basically insinuating in that tweet that there may have been students involved in this situation, whether directly or indirectly. Did they see something? Were they in the area when something happened? Were they directly involved? So that's one of the big questions leading into this afternoon that we have yet to answer uh, is exactly who else was involved besides this Knoxville police officer who we know is a UT Medical Center being treated for injuries. He is considered one of multiple people shot in some sort of situation that unfolded outside of Austin East High School this afternoon. And we're watching Gwendolyn Ducree off camera there walking towards the scene uh, to speak with folks in the area. So we're going to give her a few minutes to kind of continue to work that angle as we learn more about this situation. Um, she said that there were initially as she arrived on scene a, at least one person kind of running towards the school crying um, visibly upset and emotional. And it's not hard to understand why. This is a school that has been plagued by violence this school year. We've had five shootings involving Austin East High School students in the last year. Um, I believe at least four of them deadly. So this is uh, becoming a situation that this community, this neighborhood is absolutely fed up with concerned about, alarmed over. We see Gwen there talking to officers who have been holding down a checkpoint for the last oh, 40, 45 minutes or so on this scene. Um, as she works to learn a little bit more off in the distance. We see that ambulance there um, further on down the street. There was a fire truck there that has since left. We've seen a lot of cruisers coming in and out of the scene. But if you're just joining us, here is what we know at this hour. A Knoxville police officer has been shot, is among multiple gunshot victims after some sort of situation, shooting situation unfolded at Austin East High School. This is a magnet school uh, plagued by violence. That officer, UT Medical Center now getting treatment. It is unclear the extent of that officer's injuries or whether this was an officer responding to the scene or an officer who works security for the school. This is uh, the information that we are still trying to get from authorities. We do expect there to be a news conference shortly. Um, we also know that the vice mayor of Knoxville um, asking for prayers essentially as she headed towards the scene to get a handle on exactly what's been going on there. Um, we have Pete Michaels who is flying from the air watching this. Uh, it, it largely looks like a secure scene and that's the information that we're getting from the Knox County Sheriff's Office as they offer support um, or play I guess a supporting role in this situation. The Knox County Sheriff's Office telling us it's their understanding that this situation is secure, that people living in the area don't have any cause for immediate concern, that there is no immediate threat to her understanding. Um, we're, uh, we've got a bunch of people in our newsroom working to get a handle on some other pieces of information that are pertinent to this story, so we expect a few updates here in a moment. but. 
um, some telling information coming from the superintendent of Knox County Schools, essentially saying that all families have been reunited, so students have been reunited with their families, except for students who are you know, directly involved somehow in this situation. Uh, those students have not, are among the only students who have not been reunited with their families. Um, what he means by that uh, is kind of unclear at this hour. Does that mean students who saw something? Does that mean students who may have been directly involved? Um, you know, we're still trying to get a handle on that information. Pete Michaels now flying from the air, uh, kind of keeping a, a tabs on the situation. Uh, because this is a large scene with a reunification site set up behind the school and then we've got the scene at the school and then we've got obviously probably patrols happening around this neighborhood. So Pete, what are you seeing that's uh, noteworthy at this hour? Okay, Amanda, we're trying to uh, juggle a few things up here for you. What I can tell you is that not much has changed. We've checked all stable the shot, get the shot squared away for you. We talked about the football field. We talked about the ball field. We talked about the unification area. It, it, it doesn't appear to, well, there are a few more cars now coming in, trickling in with uh, law enforcement. It looks like most of the activity is going to be out in front of the school. Uh, I don't, I've seen all the mains and all the secondary and tertiary routes in here are blocked. Uh, there's still units from the ambulance service, the fire department on the scene. A lot of officers um, just lined up along the street with the back toward uh, the area. If you know Wilson and all the main, all the secondaries into that area, they're going to be blocked. So don't have a lot to add. All we can do right now is to show you um, what it looks like from the air, keep an eye on things. If we find something specific, or Amanda, if you think of something while we're shooting this shot, you want me to either back up, back down, turn left, you know. Yeah. It, it might be right in front of me and I can't see it. Yeah, uh, Pete, if you can just show us the, the baseball diamond one more time, that was the uh, reunification site. And it, it sounds like it still doesn't look like there's much activity there, which would make sense based on what we're hearing from the uh, school superintendent. So it doesn't look like we've really got much happening out that way. Um, the superintendent saying, look, the situation is secure, the building is secure. Um, students who were not involved have been released to their families. So it sounds like there's not a lot of reunification yeah. happening. Are you able to get any closer to um, the area where there's the highest concentration of police. I would be curious to know where the focal point of this scene is. Um, that might give us a better understanding of where exactly a shooting may have occurred or unfolded. Um, and it may also, if we don't see one focal point, help us understand if there's a potential that there were multiple scenes. Are you able to see well, all, from, from your vantage point where the most police officers seem to be clustered? Well, they seem to be clustered to an extent in front of the school. Matter of fact, I, I, mean, I can't tell from here whether they're, they're, that's normal tra traffic, but I can see a lot of activity on the street. But then back toward parts of Mary Street and Castle Street, Wilson, you're going to find a lot of activity. Of course, it looks like... Um, I can't tell if there's law enforcement there. You have some along the side of the road, parts of Castle. Uh, some of the traffic off of Magnolia Avenue trying to turn down in this area is not going to happen. But um, they're spread out, and I would agree with you, Amanda. I would, from what I can see from the air, it looks like things have stabilized, at least for now. Um, the law enforcement's got things well under the control, and I haven't uh, spotted anything else alarming at this point. Whatever's happened, um, they're investigating. Uh, we'll try to go over we'll, to uh, UT Hospital, try to get a shot there. But for now, you're seeing it as I see it. Okay, yeah, Pete, if you if you are able to pop over to UT Medical, it would be interesting to see what sort of uh, activity we see over there. As we know that the Knoxville police officer who was shot is now at UT Medical Center being treated. Um, it's unclear the extent of that officer's injuries or in what capacity he was working uh, when this situation unfolded, did he respond to the scene and was shot then, or was he working with the school in some capacity? So those are things we're still trying to get a handle on. We should mention, just now coming into the newsroom, the governor, Governor Bill Lee, addressing the situation during his virtual school call that's been happening for the last few minutes here. Um, governor Bill Lee saying that he's praying for the families and people involved. Um, anyone who may have been affected by this shooting, he says he's thinking about 
all the parties involved and keeping them in his thoughts and prayers. Um, for folks who aren't familiar with what has been happening at this particular high school this school year, here is the backstory. And the headline is, this school has been plagued by violence. Um, the neighborhood has been dealing with the shooting deaths of four of its students. Um, up until this point, it's really been largely unclear if any of those shootings were connected in any other way besides the fact that the victims were students. Um, investigations are underway. Four teens shot and killed since the beginning of this year. The very first one happened January 27th. Justin Taylor was one of the victims, the first victim, 15 years old. You remember this, I'm sure. He was shot and killed while leaving a parking lot and fellow students witnessed his death. The second, Stanley Freeman Jr., 16 years old, shot while leaving Austin East High School. The third, a 15 year old. So we have had, again, four teens, students of Austin East High School shot and killed since the beginning of this year. All of this started January 27th. Investigations are underway. Arrests made in at least one of these cases, but police have not been able to say how or if any of them are linked. Um, and this has been a, a huge focal point for detectives trying to figure out, are they connected? What's sparking this rash of violence? And earlier today, in fact, Gwen, within the last hour, Gwendolyn Ducree, our reporter on the scene, she was about five minutes away with a bunch of Austin East High School students and Knoxville police for a, a sort of stop the violence type of rally that cities and communities across the country are partaking in this week that we're also um, commemorating here in Knoxville. And they were in the middle of celebrating this big effort to stop the violence when it comes to kids. And within a few minutes of her being there, um, and about to go live for us, she was rerouted here to this scene, five five minutes away at Austin East High School, and here we are. Um, if you're just joining us, an Oxville police officer is among multiple people shot near Austin East High School. The school superintendent says that the building is secure and that students who were not involved have been released to their families. Um, Gwendolyn Ducree, if you can hear me, I did see you speaking with officers a minute ago, wondering if you were able to learn anything in those conversations uh, or if there's anything new developing on the scene that you can share with us. Yes, I was told that we can expect um, a public information officer still. Uh, where we're at, um, Scott Erling, that's who that is, he told me to stay where I'm at and stand by. Um, as far as any difference, uh, what we can see um, on this scene, uh, police are starting to question witnesses or at least people who live by. Um, I'm getting a feedback, guys, if, if that can be handled, I'm sorry. Um, but we do know that they're going door to door. They're still talking to witnesses right now. We're not gonna show them um, for safety but uh, they've been speaking with them for quite a bit now. Uh, but that's what I can tell. Uh, more people are starting to walk toward the school. I could not, I was told to turn around. Okay. Um, um, which was probably, yes. Yeah, I'm gonna ask you, Gwen, if you don't mind, cause we've got Pete over at UT Medical Center. So we wanna go over there quickly, but let, I'm gonna give you another quick break here. If you don't mind, try and chat with some of those witnesses and see if there's anything that they are willing to share with you. Um, and then we'll come back to you here in just a second. But first we wanna go with Pete Michaels over to UT Medical Center. Pete Michaels, of course, is our eye in the sky, our traffic reporter. He, um, by the way, if you don't know, operates his own plane and does these live reports for, for us. So he's the pilot and the reporter at the same time. So uh, Pete, I know you're juggling a lot there, but if you can quickly kind of walk us through what you're seeing right outside the emergency room there at UT Medical Center, where we know that that Knoxville police officer is being treated for injuries sustained in this situation at the high school. Well, the, the, there's heavier than normal traffic just trying to move on and off Alcoa Highway at the Cherokee Trail. You can see the, um, I think that's the, I'm pretty sure that's the main entrance to the uh, emergency room. So there's a lot of activity there. I don't, I, I was expecting to see many more um, uh, uniformed officers or at least uh, patrol cars, but we do see plenty of activity. But right now, um, 
it's acceptable relative to Alcoa Highway on and off. Uh, it's acceptable around uh, the hospital area. Um, just about all entrances to uh, whether it be the B building, A, B, C, D, E, H buildings, there, um, there's plenty of activity there. And again, I just, it's hard to tell from the air while we're circling exactly um, where the most activity is. But I can tell you, uh, there's another medical helicopter just to, well, there's th it's very unusual. There are three on the scene uh, right here at the hospital. Usually it's just one or two. But to give you a long answer to a short question, uh, it's acceptable. There's plenty of activity around the emergency room and around the hospital overall as we continue to circle UT Hospital. And we'll stick around here for a few more minutes, Amanda, and then we'll head back to Austin East to see if anything's changed in that area, okay? Okay, great. Uh, Pete, thank you so much. Continuing to monitor University of Tennessee Medical Center where we know the uh, Knoxville police officer who is among multiple people shot after a shooting at uh, Austin East High School. This is where that officer is being treated. The extent of his injury is unknown. We are learning that the ATF is now involved with this investigation. They are confirming that they are coming in to assist with the investigation. Uh, we're in the process of trying to get more information from them and hopefully a live interview as well to see the extent of their involvement and why they've been called in to help. Um, we're also talking with the uh, fire department, Knoxville Fire Department. Um, they're saying that they did in fact also help respond to this shooting at Austin East High School. They're calling it a shooting at the high school. Um, the fire department says they were able to make contact with help from the police department um, with patients. So, sorry, I'm just reading this statement live with you. So you're hearing it out of my mouth as I'm reading it for the first time. A spokesperson says, quote, we were able to make contact with help from the police department, shielding our paramedics as they have advanced to the patients. So this is a pretty big deal here. We're learning from the fire department that they essentially arrived on scene uh, following a shooting at the high school and shielded paramedics with help from the police department as they advanced towards patients. So this is telling us that the fire department played an integral role in reaching victims of this shooting and doing all that they could to extract patients from this scene and get a medical attention as quickly as possible. It sounds like they were able to do this with help from the police department that was shielding paramedics. That is the terminology they're using. It's unclear what they were shielding paramedics from. Was it the threat of something that could happen or an active threat? So that'll be something that we need to dig into a little deeper as we continue to learn more about this shooting at Austin East High School that has left multiple people with gunshot wounds, including a Knoxville police officer. The extent of those injuries unclear. We did take just a live look at UT Medical Center where we know the officer was taken. Not a heavy presence of police there, um, but we'll continue to monitor that. We do know that Knox County Sheriff's Office has sent one of their deputies out that way to monitor the situation as well. So we're continuing to stay in contact uh, with all the different agencies that are supporting this situation. Um, let's see, we uh, get another note here on the news desk. Um, Ashley Boley, one of our reporters, um, is saying that she heard from the behavior interventionist at Austin East, Quanta Fields, ver via text message. Um, that behavior interventionist at Austin East High School telling our reporter Ashley Bowley, I'm still at the school. Nothing has been shared with staff yet. I'm hoping to hear something soon. So we are understanding that there are staff members still inside the school at this hour as police um, continue their investigation. Gwen is on the scene. You're looking at this live shot now. She's with our chief photojournalist Keith Smith right here at this uh, location outside the school talking to witnesses. So it sounds like police um, are working to get a handle on exactly what happened both from witnesses in the neighborhood in the community and perhaps from staff who may still be inside of the school. Uh, we are also hearing from the superintendent of Knox County Schools that the building is secure and that all students who were not involved with this situation have been released to their families. So um, it, initially there was some concern that is there still an active threat? It does not appear that that is the case. The Knox County Sheriff's Office telling me that they do not believe that there is a threat any longer to the general public, that their helicopter was circling the scene as um, uh, just as support from the air. Uh, Pete Michaels is continuing to fly for us, giving us a unique vantage. 
So because of Pete, we're not only able to look at UT Medical Center where that Knoxville police officer is being, being treated, perhaps other victims could be being treated here as well. We're not sure, um, but he's watching the scene there. And then he's also been able to watch the scene above the high school for us. Pete, you're at UT Medical. Any updates out there? Oh, Amanda, I don't do, I don't have that. And uh, at the moment, and just to kind of share secrets with you on this, We've got uh, the camera that's kind of tries to stay locked in on the scene. It's kind of a, a, a gyro lens that locks in, but uh, when we kind of juggle around, we had to kind of let go of the control for that to turn the mic on. But with all that said, nothing new. There is maybe the volume here to the uh, toward the uh, building H in the emergency room could be a little bit heavier. Of course, from what I can see here, it uh, does look like the volume is up as you would expect. But I don't see. Um, I don't see anybody blocking the way into the hospital. I see, uh, let me show you this if I can real quick. That's Alcoa Highway, and that's a Cherokee Trail uh, off-ramp. That usually does get busy, but you can see as you enter the hospital. It, a little bit earlier, it was lined up here, but all entrances to the hospital are, are open and you're able to get by it. So to give you a long, uh, long answer to a short question, no, here's the entrance to the uh, emergency room. And again, things have settled down there as well. Yeah, in There's some in some ways, in some ways, Pete, uh, you know, it's it almost um, makes you not as concerned. The fact that we don't see a massive police presence outside of the hospital. Um, typically, when we know that an officer mm -hmm. is is gravely injured, then we expect to see a massive outpouring of support gathering um, out outside of emergency rooms. And the fact that we're not seeing that here gives you a little hope that all all is okay um, or maybe not as severe as it could possibly be. So uh, again, we, we hate to speculate on a condition of an officer who has been the victim of a gunshot wound after a high school shooting, but the fact that we're not seeing droves of police and law enforcement agencies and officials uh, flocking to the hospital, you know, you kind of take that um, into a consideration or account when thinking about the gravity of the situation. Yeah, I wouldn't have any argument. Uh, I wouldn't have any argument with that at all. Um, I, we saw a couple of officers just a moment ago walk out calmly outside the emergency room. It looks like they've got um, a few officers at the entrance to the emergency room. So I don't think anybody's going to be uh, just driving through there casually. But you can see that for yourself. So with that said, we'll keep an eye from uh, the over the over the top of UT Medical Center. And then as soon as I break with this shot, guys, I'll go ahead and back, head back toward the high school to see if anything's changed there, okay? Okay, we'll continue to monitor that situation with you, Pete. Thank you for keeping that scene up. Um, you got it. We're going to take a look at a map really quick uh, as we continue to monitor the scenes here. This map shows you um, the, the locations in this particular community where there have been shootings involving Austin East High School students since January 27th. So we've had a rash of shootings uh, involving Austin East High School students, four or five uh, to be exact, within the last few few months here. And this is a map showing, okay, we've got Austin East High School there on the top of the screen, and then all the different locations where these shootings have happened. So this is, this is why we pay even closer attention to what's happening right now is because of the the history, the rash of violence centered on Austin East High School within recent weeks and months. We do want to share some information if you're just joining us just to get you up to speed. Shooting at Austin East High School, multiple gunshot victims, including a Knoxville police officer. That officer is being treated at UT Medical Center. That officer's condition is unknown. It's unclear who else is involved, but the superintendent of schools tells us the building is secure and that all students have been reunited with their families except for students who may have been involved with this situation. Um, so that implies that students may have witnessed something or been involved with something and that those students um, you know, have not been released to families. Whether that's because they are being questioned or interviewed, we are not sure at this hour. But we do know that the building is deemed secure. Uh, we're also hearing from a staff member who is inside of the high school. Ashley Boley, one of our reporters, getting us this information. She's talking with um, the behavior interventionist for Austin East High School. That person's name is Quana Fields. That person telling Ashley Boley, I'm still at the school. Nothing has been shared with staff yet. 
Just hearing a bunch of rumors, not really anything confirmed, but hoping to hear something soon. So it appears that we've got at least staff members who are still inside the school. We know officers are going uh, around the community, surrounding homes, talking to witnesses, looking for witnesses. So I imagine that there's some level of questioning and interviewing happening within the school as well. We want to share some interesting information that we were just able to get from the Knoxville Fire Department. The Knoxville Fire Department confirming to WVLT News that they responded initially to a shooting at Austin East High School and that they made their way towards patients with the help of police officers who acted as um, support for them. Essentially, the police department shielded paramedics who advanced towards the victims of this shooting to get those patients and extract them from the scene and get them the medical attention that they needed. So uh, it's unclear if the police were shielding paramedics from an active threat or just from the possibility uh, of some sort of danger. So it's unclear, but we'll continue to try and get information on that. Also learning within the last few minutes here, the ATF has been called in to help. They're gonna assist Knoxville police. Um, the ATF telling us no explosives have been found, but they do help, keep in mind, with the investigation of guns and shell casings. So that would keep in line with what we already know about this situation. You see Gwendolyn Ducree there off in the distance. On this live shot, speaking with officers who are manning the checkpoint here. Um, this is a checkpoint where only authorized personnel are allowed to enter the scene. So the medical examiner had been on scene. Uh, it's unclear in what capacity, if they've left, why they were called, if it was a, for a precaution, or if there was a specific reason that they would have been there. Um, the TBI is also helping in this case. This has quickly become the focal point of uh, many national news outlets, to name a few. CNN, CBS News, New York Times, all reporting on this. Our company is sharing this coverage with our more than 100 television stations across the country as well. So Knoxville, Tennessee, for the wrong reasons, becoming um, the center point of national news at this hour as a shooting investigation unfolds at Austin East High School. We know that a Knoxville police officer is among multiple gunshot victims at this hour. Um, unclear what that officer's condition is. We are working to get as much information as we can. But our Pete Michaels, who is typically our traffic reporter, but is also a pilot, flies his own plane, and is able to give us a really good vantage point of different scenes from the air, took us to UT Medical Center a short time ago, and uh, we saw that there was not a heavy police presence outside of UT Medical Center, which we're gonna take as uh, an indication of the level of injuries that this officer may have sustained. If it's serious or grave injuries, you typically expect to see a, a bunch of officers congregating outside of a hospital. We hate to speculate, but we are taking that as a piece of information that we're going to put in our pocket and just hold on to it as we learn more about the situation. Pete is back now live over Austin East High School as the investigation continues to unfold. And for folks who are just joining us, Pete, a few minutes ago we were talking about is there any way to really identify um, the focal point of this investigation? Is it the entrance to the school? Is it the backside of the school? Does it look like there could potentially be multiple scenes? And when we're able to look from the air and see where all of the uh, cruisers are um, gathered, sometimes it can tell a story. So tell us again what sort of pattern you're seeing from the air there. Well, I'm looking at Parkview, uh, Louise. I'm looking at uh, Wilson Road. And, and I can't quite make out where this the building is uh, to the northwest part of the the, uh, the school, um, but uh, there's a lot of activity here. But overall, and I and I, tend, I agree with Amanda. I mean, when I first arrived here, I I expected to see a lot more activity. And again, we're not going to speculate, but hopefully we could take that as a good sign. A uh, good sign. You would think it was a, if it was a uh, if it was a tr uh, maybe a worse situation. We would definitely be using the, the football field for a number of reasons, but that that's vacated. The, even the, the baseball field and even the parking lot where we understand you are going to have uh, parents congregate, meet, reunite. There's a, there are a few more cars here now, Amanda, but not, um, 
again, not what we would have expected. I think the parents are being well informed at this point. Yeah, and this would be in line with away. this would be in line with what we're learning, Pete. That this is largely a secure scene. We're learning from the superintendent of schools that the school is secure, the building is secure. Learning from the Knox County Sheriff's Office to their understanding that there is no active threat. Um, so that's at least the good news. It doesn't sound like, by all accounts, that the immediate neighborhood or community needs to be worried about any sort of active threat at this hour. Um, the governor, Governor Bill Lee, was actually in the middle of addressing the state about his education plan and whether schools, um, you know, how schools are going to go to virtual learning next year. He is, right. of course, pivoting during that address to talk about what's unfolding here in Knoxville. And we do uh, have a little piece of an interview that we'd like to share with you really quick. I want to acknowledge a very difficult and tragic situation we have happening across the state right now in Knoxville, Austin East Magnet High School. There's apparently a school shooting there. Um, I've just been informed about that just recently. Um, we don't have a lot of details. It's a current situation uh, right now, and law enforcement will update us appropriately. Uh, if for some reason I step out of this, that, that's what that will be for, or we'll have limited, uh, we may have limited time after. But I just wanted to uh, make reference to that and, and ask uh, for you all to, for those who are watching, online or otherwise to uh, pray for that situation and for the families and the victims that might be affected by that in our state. All right, that's Governor Bill Lee addressing the shooting that is uh, the investigation that is now underway at Austin East High School after a Knoxville police officer is among multiple people shot this afternoon. Um, David Sykes, you want to bring that in to me? We're getting some new information into the studio. As he brings this new information over, I'm just going to keep you up to speed really quick here. All right, thanks, David. Uh, the TBI is now en route to help with this investigation, the ATF is involved as well. Um, we asked in what capacity are you involved? They said uh, no explosives have been found, but of course we do know they assist with the investigations of guns and shell casings so that it would make sense they would be involved in this in some way. Um, we do also know that the medical examiner had been on scene. It is unclear um, if that was a precautionary measure or if there was a concrete reason that they would have been on scene um, and that they may have had to leave as well. Um, we're I, back in the director's booth, guys. It sounds like the ATF, a spokesperson, may be on the line available for an interview. Okay, so as soon as that person is ready, um, Mickey French, the special agent in charge, we're going to get them on the line here to ask a couple questions. Um, what we do know, the Knoxville police officer who is uh, among the shooting victims is at UT Medical Center. It is unclear who else was shot in this situation. Was it a student? Was it a staff member at the school? Was it, you know, somebody just nearby in the area? We just don't know. We are waiting for uh, officials to share that information with us. Of course, they likely still trying to get a handle on this situation too. This is a very fluid situation. We're in the first hour or so here. This is a time when they really spend their energy uh, getting getting all their facts in order, all their ducks in a row. We know that they're already in the process or have been in the process of interviewing people in the area. We imagine that's happening inside the school. By the way, the superintendent tells us that building is secure. Um, and we've heard from at least one staff member inside the building telling our Ashley Boley uh, that they're still at the school. Nothing's been shared with staff yet and they're hoping to hear something soon. That's coming from a behavior interventionist at Austin East High School. Again, the governor, we just heard from him addressing the situation. Uh, he was actually in the middle of uh, an address about virtual learning when he had to pivot there um, to get updated on what's happening here in Knoxville and then releasing a statement that he's praying for the families who may be involved here. Um, Gwendolyn Ducree has been on the scene out there talking with officers and witnesses. Um, is she in a position where we can see if she's learned anything? Okay, we're going to see what she can find out. We've also had Pete Michaels watching the situation at UT Medical Center um, where we know that the officer has been is being treated at a certain point. And if you live downtown, you probably heard the Knox County Sheriff's Office helicopter circling and circling and circling. We're not really hearing it anymore. I assume they're, they've since landed. 
but um, initially they were helping in a support capacity. They told us we're just in the air to, to provide another set of eyes on this situation. We do not believe that there is any active threat. And that would make a lot of sense from what we're seeing from the air. Not a lot of urgency uh, in the activity on the ground. Pete Michaels, any update from your vantage point as you fly above? Gotcha. Okay. Pete is traveling to another scene, so he's not live with us. This is a look at the scene that he shot from us a few minutes ago. This is not live video, but I am live on air, air with you here. Um, but this kind of gives you a sense of the lack of urgency that we're seeing on the scene, which would tell us that everything we're hearing from police and investigators is that this is a secure situation. So that's the good news for folks who live in this neighborhood. Doesn't sound like you have much to be concerned about or worried about no real active threat. One of the more interesting pieces of information that we've been able to get our hands on comes from the Knoxville Fire Department who initially responded to the scene. They're telling us that, yeah, we showed up here for a shooting and when we arrived on the scene, Knoxville police were shielding paramedics as they advanced towards the patient. So essentially what we're hearing from the fire department is that uh, we get on scene, there's a shooting, police helped us safely get to the victims who needed medical attention. So we're seeing how they work in tandem um, when responding to these situations. Guys in the booth, I didn't actually hear what you said. Can you repeat that for me? Got it, okay. Uh, we are working to get uh, a phone interview with the special agent in charge with the ATF to talk about their involvement in this investigation. We've got multiple agencies now working in tandem on this investigation. I'll just rattle them off here for you real quick. ATF, TBI, Knox County Sheriff's Office, KPD, Knoxville Fire Department involved as well. Um, I think I said TBI for you there. And um, a lot of people wondering, okay, uh, students, how were they involved? In what capacity? And that's one of the big questions we have at this hour. Oh, okay, I'm just hearing from my producer that we have Mayor India Kincannon, Knoxville's mayor, uh, live with us now. We want to take a listen. Uh, is she on the phone or giving a live news conference, guys? You. I mean, tell me what you've seen so far um, being next to his bedside and, and what his fears are like. Well, first, I just want to say that my thoughts and prayers are with everyone been, who's affected by this shooting and this incident. Um, I was really glad to have the opportunity to meet with the officer who was hurt, and he's conscious and he's in good spirits. I met with his wife. Um, he's going to be okay. And uh, I thanked him for putting his life on the line to protect uh, the students and staff at the school. And he said he'd rather that he be hurt than anybody else. And uh, he's in very good spirits and um, looking forward to the successful surgery. The, the medical staff here is very on top of it and uh, taking good care of him. Now, this is not the first shooting in this area just this year. Um, tell me what your message is to the community. My message is that we all need to work together to stop the violence. We're working together with city, with, with parents, with the school system, with uh, community-based organizations. We all need to work on this together. Uh, KPD's doing their part, and so is the school. It's, it's a big challenge, and we're going to need everybody in the whole city to work on this together. Any other questions, you guys? We want to wait. Okay. Thank you. All right, that is uh, Mayor India Kincannon. We're hearing from her, obviously. She's at UT Medical Center. This is interesting, and this is good news. Folks uh, wondering about the condition of the Knoxville police officer shot at Austin East High School. Mayor India Kincannon giving us a reason to breathe a sigh of relief at this hour. She says that she just met with the Knoxville um, police I'm officer talking, and uh, that he is conscious and in good spirits. I'm coming back talking. And um, uh, when you are live, if you can hear us, so give us just a second here. Um, basically, Mayor Andy Kincannon saying that the officer that she just met with who was shot at Austin East High School is in good spirits, is conscious, and uh, that he is there being treated. Uh, he is with his wife. The mayor says she met with both of them and that the officer says, look, I'm glad that it was me that I could be the one there to, to do what I needed to do to keep students safe and protect students. Um, so that's the good news. We are hearing that this Knoxville police officer who was shot at Austin East High School 
is okay. Conscious, alert, in good spirits, happy that he was the one that could be there to take take the hit and pr protect students at the high school. Um, that is coming from Mayor India Cannon. So that kind of confirms what we had been suspecting, that the officer was not gravely injured um, based on the police presence or lack of police presence that we were seeing at the hospital. So that is the good news coming from the mayor. Um, we'll continue to get more information on that end of this situation. Gwendolyn Ducree has been talking with uh, police officers on the scene at Austin East High School and witnesses to this situation and people who live in the area. Uh, Gwen, give us a feel for what you've learned within the last 10 minutes because it's been a few minutes since we've talked to you. Yeah, I apologize about that. I was speaking with a woman saying that she's a parent um, of a student here um, telling me that she has not been able to get in contact with her daughter. Um, she says that she's waiting by to see if that her daughter, uh, who is a student here at Austin East, will answer the phone. Um, I asked her, I couldn't imagine what's going on in your mind right now, but if you could tell me what's what, what are you thinking? And she said, you know what? I'm just keeping faith right now. Uh, that's all I know how to do. And that's what I'm going to do. I love this community. I love this school. Uh, my daughter is supposed to graduate, uh, go to prom here, and that's what she's going to do. And so that's what that mother is telling me, although she says she has not been able to make contact with her daughter who was here at Austin East today for school. I did also speak with um, some folks who were standing by uh, around the time telling me that, um, you know, this is what happens. They're, they're used to violence in this area, but they never can get used to it being uh, affecting children. Um, that's a lot of what you hear anytime we're having to get in front of this camera and talk to you about the gun violence um, that is affecting these students. It's, it should not happen, especially not to children. Um, I'm still trying to confirm. I've been hearing a little bit about what you've been confirming here, um, Amanda. Um, we do know that some folks um, we're saying that they heard possible gunshots. Um, multiple people told me that. I'm, I'm waiting to hear that uh, to be confirmed. I'm still waiting for that public information officer to get here. Um, we're still being told to stand by um, and that we'll be getting some additional information, hopefully, uh, when we when we speak with him, Amanda. Okay, and just getting some additional confirmation here on the status of this Knoxville police officer. We just heard Mayor India Kincannon say that he's conscious, um, alert, and in good spirits. She just met with him in the, within the last few minutes. Um, Kimberly Glenn with the Knox County Sheriff's Office just texting me and saying, yes, he's in stable condition. So good news on that front. Now we've got to move on to the other people who were shot. Um, they have not been identified. Uh, their conditions have not been discussed. So that's kind of the next phase of this process. Who else was involved with this? Um, Gwen, I do want to circle back. I had a question for you about the woman that you just uh, spoke with. She said yes. her daughter is a student at Austin East High School and that she has not been able to make contact with her daughter this afternoon. Um, is Does she know for a fact that her daughter is still at the school or is there a possibility her daughter may have left, doesn't have her phone on and she just can't make contact? That's what she's hoping. She she did mention because of all this chaos, she's hoping that she's with a friend right now and they're just trying to figure out what's going on and, you know, they're children. So she's hoping that she's just not by her phone right now, uh, but that she's okay. Um, but again, she doesn't know where her daughter is. She's still standing by right now, just trying to figure out. Um, I encourage her to try to go up here and uh, speak with police and let, let them know that, you know, I'm trying to get in touch with my child. I haven't been able to thus far, um, but I, honestly, I think she's just pretty stunned right now um, and just don't know what to do next. Um, so. <sighs> okay, yeah, a lot to process out there, Gwen, yes. as you continue to learn more. A couple yeah. different scenarios we could be dealing with. Keep in mind, we do know from the Knox County School Superintendent that the building is secure, so we at least know that that situation is under control according to the superintendent. We also know that students who um, weren't directly involved, they've all been reunited with their family members. Um, the superintendent says only students who uh, may have been involved have not been released to their parents. That could mean a range of things. That could mean students who saw something and are being questioned by police. That could mean students who were somehow involved. That could mean students who were nearby. We just don't know at this hour. So um, that's what we're still trying to get some more information about. Uh, we do know, I'm sorry, I've got two people handing me notes here. Do you, uh, my news director, Mary Beth, is bringing something over that we can hopefully share with you. A lot of fluid stuff happening here in the newsroom, so bear with us. Um, We'll get to that in a second. Ben, what are you finding? 
Okay, this is not what we want to hear. All right, Knoxville police just sharing a release with us. This is information that we hate to have to share with you. Thank you, David Sykes. Okay, go ahead and do that. Uh, we're gonna take a look really quick here at a, a comment from the state's education commissioner as I read this news release. Oh, it's not there, I'm sorry. Okay, give me one second. Okay, this is what we're learning from the Knoxville Police Department. A male subject who was possibly armed in the school is what prompted police to respond to this situation. When police arrived and approached the subject, shots were fired. That KPD officer that we've been talking about was hit at least one time and taken to UT Medical Center. We, again, we know this with injuries that are not expected to be life-threatening. One male was pronounced dead at the scene while another was detained for further investigation. So this has now become a fatal shooting at Austin East High School, according to Knoxville police. There are no other known gunshot victims. So it sounds like at this hour, we have one male dead at the scene, um, another detained for further questioning, and a Knoxville police officer who was shot but did not suffer life-threatening injuries. Again, I'm going to repeat this to you because this is information just coming into our newsroom that we want to make sure that we share with you accurately and that you hear this because this is a major development in this story. Knoxville police say that they responded to Austin East High School after receiving reports of a male subject armed in the school. As officers approached the subject, shots were fired. An officer hit at least once. One male pronounced dead at the scene another detained for further investigation, no other known gunshot victims. So it sounds like two people shot, the person who is dead on the scene and the officer who is expected to survive, um, suffered non-life-threatening injuries at the scene there. Um, it is it sounds like we've basically got ourselves an officer involved shooting and uh, we've got to understand a little bit more about this situation. Was this male subject who was possibly armed in the school a student um, or somebody else? And so that's going to be the next phase of the investigation and the uh, the process of reporting information to you. That's something that we would like to learn as quickly as we can. Uh, Erica Lunsford is at University of Tennessee Medical Center where the Knoxville Police officer is recovering from his injuries. Erica, we heard from Mayor India Kincannon just a few minutes ago that she had met with the officer and his wife, that he's conscious, he's alert, and even in good spirits, going as far as saying that he was glad that he was the one at the scene today. He was the one that took the gunfire in an effort to keep students safe. What are you learning uh, out there tonight? I mean, that's so far what I've learned, that information that you just shared about that officer, and that is good news in this sad situation. And right now, outside the emergency room, it's pretty calm. Um, not a lot of action going on here, which could be hopefully good news as well. But again, just that officer, we know that he's inside the hospital right now, and he's doing pretty good talking, and the mayor Cannon shared that he is again, in good spirit. So that's all that we have right now, this information. I'm gonna reach out to other officers around the scene and see if they're able to give any more information here. I'm gonna also talk to some of the people that might be visiting uh, and see if they have any connection to this officer as well. Um, Amanda? Walk me a little bit, walk me through, Erica, what you're seeing on scene there. I imagine we've got officers at the entrance kind of watching who's coming and going there. Um, but beyond that, do you see much activity or is this just kind of a typical day at UT Medical Center? It doesn't really look much out of the ordinary. When I came in, there was one officer kind of just monitoring to me, telling me to go park in the parking garage. But that was it. Um, so far, I mean, it's pretty quiet. There's an officer uh, by the entrance of the hospital. His cruiser is there. Um, but other than that, it does seem like a typical day. Uh, it's really quiet. A few people are sitting outside. Um, I have not been inside yet to check and see how things are inside the emergency room. But other than that, everything seems pretty, pretty calm here for the most part. All right, good. Well, uh, this is, you know, uh, this is some information that I think is giving folks at home uh, the ability to rest easy, knowing that this officer is going to be okay, that he's alert and conscious and talking and in good spirit. So we'll have you continue to monitor the situation out there for us, Erica, and uh, we'll touch base with you here in a few minutes as we continue to learn more about this situation. If we can go back live to the scene, 
where the investigation is unfolding. Now it makes sense. We're hearing that the uh, medical examiner is on the scene. Um, it, we were unclear initially if they had left or if they were called for a specific reason or if it was just uh, an in-case type of situation, but now we're learning that there is an exact reason the medical examiner is there because one man is dead on the scene. Um, still working to learn how that person was involved, uh, whether it was a student or you know some other person that just happened to be in the school. Um, Mickey French with the ATF is a special agent in charge. As you probably heard us report here in the last few minutes, ATF among many agencies now involved in this investigation. Um, Special Agent French, thank you for joining us here. Uh, talk to us a little bit about what your teams are looking for and how you expect them to help above and beyond what Knoxville police would be able to do on their own. Well, thank you. Uh, on any kind of critical incident response, uh, you know, the first thing that we do is we uh, deploy a, an advanced team or several agents, TFOs, to the scene to get kind of the feel and nature of the incident itself. At that point, we then deploy resources as needed. So if you had a, an explosive type incident, we would uh, we could deploy uh, explosive experts that could render a device safe. And Special Agent French, we should just pause for a second and make sure it's clear that there were no, there's no indication that there was any explosive found, correct? That's correct. I'm just kind of given the, the overall sense. Got it. This is what, what we do when we go out there. Uh, we can bring out canines to, that are explosive detection canines. Those also can be used not only on explosive devices, but also to, to find cartridge casings, spent cartridge casings, as well as firearms that were used. Uh, we have the ability to send out, you know, national response team or a special response team. And the bottom line is we first want to ensure the public safety. Uh, at that point, we would then begin to assist our state and local agencies on any processing of the evidence. And where ATF helps the most is the ability to trace the firearm. And then we can also assist with NIBIN, which is the National Integrated Ballistics Information Network, which is a system designed to place uh, evidence, cartridge casings into a system to see if it links to any other crimes around the country. So it sounds like the 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 main focus for you guys is uh, we've clearly got an officer involved shooting here, um, identifying whose gunfire hit who in this scenario. That would be correct. And how long of a process is that for you typically? Well, you know, some of it's going to depend on uh, how fast we can get to the evidence. We can do an urgent trace on the gun and get results back within hours. Uh, when it comes to the ballistic evidence, the fired cartridge casings, we can enter that into the NIBIN system relatively fast. The turnaround time is generally 24 to 48 hours, but in incidents like this, we would also be sending these to a crime laboratory where the experts can, can confirm, you know, which casings came from which gun. And is part of the reason that the ATF is called in and Knoxville police doesn't just do the investigation on their own for reasons of transparency. Um, it, it looks better if you have an outside agency doing the investigation and there is higher confidence in the results of that investigation if it's um, if an independent agency is the one doing it. Well, that is that is correct. But a vast majority of critical critical incidents have an overlap of federal and state jurisdiction. So the federal nexus gives the ATF the ability to assist our state and local partners and, you know, simply put, ATF will respond to any significant incident involving firearms, explosives or arson. And how many um, crews or team members do you have um, ATF agents? How many ATF agents do you have inside of the building right now? And have they given you any indication of what they're seeing inside? Uh, I don't know exactly how many. I know I initially had three or four uh, special agents out there and a task force officer who is assigned to the Knoxville Police Department. Um, I, you know, we have an office there in Knoxville. We also have a satellite office in Greenville, Tennessee. So uh, all of our resources responded and are available. And have they told you what they've what they've seen inside? Is this looking to be a complex situation that will require um, 
a long investigation or something that they may be able to kind of be in and out within the day? Because again, we're talking about a, you know, a high school and we're in the beginning of the, the school week here. I can't imagine that they would go back to school tomorrow, but um, you know, we do have five days left in the week. Yeah, I don't have any of the specifics on the actual scene and the evidence that's there and how long it might take, but I would imagine that the school is, is going to be working with the Knoxville Police Department as the lead agency to determine when they can open back up. Mm -hmm. And are they looking specifically for where bullets traveled and does that include, you know, really combing through walls and, you know, the floor and or are they just looking for for, I would imagine they need to look and see where the bullets traveled and how they traveled, not just picking them up off the floor and marking the spot. That's correct. You know, they'll, they'll do some photography work. They'll do, uh, you know, a lot of a lot of measurements and diagrams. Um, they'll they'll ensure where everybody was when the incident actually happened. Uh, they'll get witness statements, interviews. Uh, they'll look at surveillance video if that's uh you know, available. Uh, so it's it's a lengthy process, but with all of our personnel there working together uh, and, you know, kind of dividing and conquering tasks, you know, we can be relatively efficient with it. All right. And just to recap, how many, how long do you think until we have a better understanding of whose gunfire hit who in this officer involved shooting? Uh, you know, I can't answer that. Knoxville Police Department is going to be the lead agency, and they'll they'll determine when they can release that information. Um, so you're saying, uh, Special Agent French, it could not, in, I guess my question is, how long until you all know, not necessarily that information is released to us in the media, but how long until you all know within your agency what exactly happened here? Are we talking days or weeks? Um, I would say I would have an answer on some of the specifics uh, later this evening. Oh, wow. Okay, pretty quick. All right. Well, Special Agent French, thank you so much for joining us. Um, hopefully we can circle back with you here a little bit later tonight and see if there's any updated information. Is there anything else that you think is important to add that I didn't ask you about? No, thank you. Okay, thank you so much for your time, and we'll stay in touch throughout the evening as this investigation develops. Um, did I hear that right, guys, in the uh, booth that we've got Pete Michaels at UT Medical Center? But did you also say Casey Wheelis is reporting for us this afternoon as well? All right, Pete, take us down to UT. Hey, yeah. Tell us what you see. Yeah. Well, Amanda, right over Alcoa Highway, of course, the off-ramp Alcoa Highway Cherokee Trail. The entrance to the main hospital, UT Medical Center, appears, everything appears to be about normal in and out of the main entrances. I don't know if I'll have time to get back around to the back side of the building to the emergency entrance, but some of the um, driveways into the main executive parts, uh, some of the other buildings um, back around toward Building H, which is down near the, well, that, that's the emergency room entrance right there. Uh, there are a lot of units from the ambulance service there. There are still officers, as you'd imagine, on the scene, but not nearly as many as I we, we saw a little bit earlier. But as we come back around the back side of the building by um, the uh, Holland Ross Center and the Cherokee Trail, that all looks about normal. So right now, out and off the Alcoa Highway, the Cherokee Trail, into the hospital. If I come back around, there was um, a lot of activity toward the back of the building, but again, I'm not, I'm not in position to say that it's anything terribly unusual. Just a lot of traffic and still some folks parked at the entrance to the uh, emergency room. But again, as Amanda mentioned a little bit earlier, I think it's probably um, just as well that there's not a lot more going on here. Maybe that's something to um, something to be thankful for. But if we see something change, we'll keep an eye on things from the sky. And by the way, and when I was over the um, Austin East High School a few minutes ago, things appeared to be settling down there, except for a few areas around uh, Mary Street and maybe Wilson Avenue. You still cannot uh, approach the building around Austin East. Unless you can you can get around the school on the backside if. Um, the school but not into the school area so keep an eye on things from the sky right down over um, ut medical center over the um, right. heart of uh, downtown knoxville all right pete thank you we okay, appreciate Amanda. that vantage point as pete kind of shows us the outside of the building we can give you a glimpse into what's happening inside mayor india can cannon met briefly with the Knoxville Police Department officer who was shot in this situation and his wife she told us moments ago that he's in good spirits alert and conscious and said really he was glad that he was the one there to be able to protect students.
We're learning a little bit more about this officer involved shooting uh, one officer, the KPD officer hit by gunfire, but expected to be okay. Um, a male pronounced dead at the scene and then a third person, a male is being held for questioning at this hour. So a massive investigation underway as we learn more about this officer involved shooting deadly officer involved shooting at Austin East High School. That's what's happening today. Um, there has been a lot of violence leading up to this point involving Austin East High School students. Five shootings, um, most of them deadly since January 27th. Uh, morning anchor Casey Wheelis is back now to help us with our coverage. She's in the newsroom to talk a little bit about the history of violence that has plagued Austin East High School. Um, just about an hour or two ago, Gwendolyn Ducree was about five minutes away from this scene um, covering a massive event between police and Austin East High School students and neighbors about curbing violence in this area and just terrible timing. I mean, getting sent to this shooting at Austin East High School. Do we have Casey Wheelis in the newsroom and can we shoot over there to uh, get some more information from her about the backstory here? Casey, refresh our memories on the, the different shootings, four or five, I believe, since January now. Yeah, Amanda, that's exactly right. And I'm, I am in the newsroom right now. and We're getting a lot of information. So if you hear other voices and things like that, that's what's happening. But I do want to kind of give you a little bit of a background. We've been telling you about these shootings that have started back in January. This neighborhood is hurting. We are hurting with them. Let's start on January 27th. Justin Taylor was 15 when he was shot and left in a parking lot. The second, Stanley Freeman Jr. was just 16 years old. He was shot while leaving Austin East High School. The third, 15-year-old Janaria Muhammad shot outside her home. And Jamaria and Gillette, a 15-year-old, was shot and killed just last month. And if we do have a map, I kind of want to show you. These have all been centered around Austin East High School. Now, we are not connecting these. Police have not connected these shootings to each other. They have not connected these shootings to what happened today. But you can see they are all just blocks away from the school. One of the shootings there, Stanley Freeman, happened and as he was leaving school, other students witnessed his death. This is just unbelievable to hear for this community. And Amanda, even this morning, you mentioned Gwendolyn was there. Even this morning as we got ready for our morning newscast, we previewed that event. We were talking about the healing, the community coming together in, in what has been such a difficult time. So to even fathom something like this could happen, is it, you, can, you can feel what that community is feeling and we are hurting with them. And Amanda, we are continuing to ask police questions to see if any of these shootings may be related in any way, shape, or form. We'll let you know what we learn here in the newsroom. Yeah, and that's a, that's a big piece of this conversation that we've been having for months now since the first shooting. You know, it became a clear pattern in the following weeks after that first shooting involving an Austin East High School student, Casey. And really, police up until this point have not been able to connect or find a pattern amongst these shootings besides the fact that they all involve Austin East High School students. So that's been this big mystery. What if what is there, if any, connection? And um, in terms of investigations, only one has suspects. So mm -hmm. this has really stumped police, uh, and it's been a, a difficult process for them as well. Um, so, yeah, a lot more to come on this. We'll continue to rely on you in the newsroom as we learn more. And I've got uh, David Sykes walking in here with some new information. If you learn anything there, we'll come to you too. Yeah, um, and Amanda, I was going to say real quick while you get that information, police have been asking since January for someone to come forward. People witness these shootings. People might know what happened, but so far no one has come forward. And so they really are relying on the community to come together. They can give anonymous tips for these shootings as they work to kind of deal with what has been happening. Yeah, and a double edged sword for them as well. They're like, we do want your anonymous tips because that's going to give us a starting point. Mm -hmm. But at some point we do need people to go on the record and say, I saw this and be willing to testify in court if we're going to actually follow through and prosecute. So that's been uh, a tough for them, but yeah, we'll continue to follow that. Um, David Sykes, one of our assignment editors, just walked in, Casey, and mm -hmm. mentioned, handed me this paper. We've got another shooting uh, that mm -hmm. could, that's possibly unfolding uh, on Truslow, which is near Center Drive. Um, it, it was initially paged out as a drive-by shooting, um, and they are searching for a suspect. Is that correct? And how far, David, is this from Austin East High School? 
under a mile. So we're now in the situation where we've got another possible shooting happening within a mile of Austin East High School. Casey, uh, we've got Zach Rickens headed to that scene to learn more about that. Um, but police uh, confirming that this is now another shooting investigation underway within a close vicinity. That's David Sykes. You just saw watch, walking behind Casey, by the way. Um, who's feeding me information. Another shooting near Austin East High School. So for folks who are just joining us, let's recap them. And Casey, I'll keep you here because I'm going to come back to you for the backstory. Mm -hmm. um, if you're just joining us, Knoxville police have an officer involved shooting on their hands at Austin East High School. A KPD officer was hit by gunfire. That officer is expected to be okay. Um, this is a look at the scene earlier today when Knox County Sheriff's Office had their uh, helicopter flying above just as a measure of added security for no other reason than that. Oh, this is live. So they are still um, this. Ah, gotcha. Okay. It's the, I forgot about the other shooting. So this is actually live. This is not our taped footage from Austin East High School earlier. The Knox County Sheriff's Office has got their helicopter back in the air because again, we do have that other shooting investigation now underway about a mile away from the high school. Uh, this was called in as a possible drive by shooting. So this is the other scene, the other investigation shooting investigation that's unfolded in the last two hours here. Or so this happened in the last few minutes. That's why we are seeing Knox County flying again. This is Truslow Street um, near Center Drive. East Knoxville area about a mile from Austin East High School at this hour. It's unclear if there is any connection between this current investigation and the shooting investigation unfolding at Austin East High School. Um, but to keep you in the loop on the Austin East investigation, let's finish that update before we move on to this Austin East Knoxville police officer shot expected to be OK. Um, a male who was considered armed had entered the high school. That person is dead at the high school. And then a third person, a male, is detained and being questioned at this hour. So unclear exactly who these two guys are. Was it a student? Just people walked off the street? We really don't know. That's what we're trying to get to the bottom of, and I'm sure investigators are hard at work trying to learn as well. Um, we do know that all students who were not involved with this have been released to their families, reunited with their families. Um, it sounds like ones who may have seen what happened or may know something are still uh, on scene perhaps being questioned by police. Um, okay, this is just coming into the newsroom from Ashley Boley. Um, this is in reference to the invest piece of the investigation that we're just learning about. Police telling us that a male subject who was possibly armed in the school is what prompted this whole scenario. Uh, Ashley is saying that Austin East students were required to have clear backpacks starting on March 8th. Um, she says the two times that she visited the school since then, she saw students with clear backpacks. Um, and that's not something that I knew. So thank you, Ashley Boley, for sharing that. Um, we'll see how that comes into play. And I imagine the reason that that policy was instituted was because of all the violence that has been happening um, with Austin East High School students in recent months. OK, again, if we can go back to that other situation, if you're just joining us, we've got two separate situations right now. We've got a live look over Austin East High School. There is a deadly officer involved shooting there. The officer is OK. Then in the last 10 minutes, we've learned about another shooting investigation, a possible shooting about a mile away on Truslow Street. That's where we're hearing that um, what was reported as a drive by shooting unfolded within the last few minutes investigators confirming to us that they are working that guys. Do we have that live picture there now? If we can go to that live. OK, perfect. Um, this is the live shot at the high school, Austin East High School. Uh, this is Mayor India Kincannon. You see her on scene there. She has had a busy afternoon um, bebopping from UT Medical Center and back over to this scene, trying to get a handle on all the facts and all the information. She's already visited with the Knoxville police officer who was shot in this deadly officer involved shooting at Austin East High School. Um, she met with the officer and his wife and, you know, gave us some positive news, news that I think a lot of us were hoping for, which is this officer is okay in good spirits and uh, by her account, happy 
to be in the position to protect students at the school. Um, again, we're learning from police that they entered the high school after getting reports of an armed male suspect, possibly armed male, and that's when shots were fired. Uh, we know the ATF has maybe five agents inside the school right now trying to figure out who shot who. They are saying they may have that information or that knowledge by as early as tonight. Whether or not that information is shared with us that quickly is another story. Um, but Mayor India Kincannon getting back into her car there after um, conferring with officials on scene. Guys, do we have that live shot available at that other shooting investigation that is now unfolding about a mile away? We do not. Okay, a few minutes ago we showed you Knox County Sheriff's Office had their helicopter in the air over that scene, which is a mile from where we are right now at the high school. Um, possibly trying to secure the situation, maybe looking for someone. Uh, it's unclear at this hour. Again, now in the matter of three hours, we've had two shooting investigations pop up in hey Knoxville. Guys. It's unclear whether or not they are connected. Um, and it, the most recent shooting investigation seems to be quite fresh. So it could be a moment before we get an update. We do have a crew headed to that scene, Zach Rickens. Um, headed over to Treslow Street, which is near Center Drive. So hopefully we'll be able to have a quick update for you, live update for you uh, over there as soon as we can get him powered up and live for you. Um, let's, yeah, let's go to uh, the comment from the State Education Commissioner, Penny um, Schwinn, and we've, if you've been following, you know that the governor and, of course, the commissioner were both in the middle of giving a news conference around 4 o'clock about virtual learning, and they had to pivot to address this situation. Uh, Penny Schwinn saying, as details continue to emerge, our thoughts are with every member of the school community in Knoxville who is dealing with the immediate impacts of the shooting that took place this afternoon. The department stands ready to provide support. It is time to wrap arms around the affected students, educators, school staff, their families, and the entire community to support them through this horrific tragedy. Um, this is a scenario that is not just garnering attention uh, statewide, but nationally as well. We've got CNN, CBS, even the New York Times reporting on this story as well. Um, and our corporate uh, station, Gray, which owns um, more than 100 stations across the country, is sharing um, this information and reporting on this uh, investigation across the country as well. Governor Bill Lee did take a moment during his address to talk about what is unfolding now in Knoxville at Austin East High School. I want to acknowledge a very difficult and tragic situation we have happening across the state right now in Knoxville, Austin East Magnet High School. There's apparently a school shooting there. Um, I've just been informed about that just recently. Um, we don't have a lot of details. It's a current situation. Uh, right now, and law enforcement will update us appropriately. Uh, if for some reason I step out of this, that, that's what that will be for, or we'll have limited, uh, we may have limited time after. But I just wanted to uh, make reference to that and, and ask uh, for you all to, and for those who are watching online or otherwise, to uh, pray for that situation and for the families and the victims that might be affected by that in our state. Just, All just right, we're going like to give you that. another look at the scene here. Austin East High School, this is a shot from above as uh, we continue to watch this situation. Uh, it has largely been um, inactive, not inactive in the sense that there aren't police there, but there's no real sense of urgency. And in recent minutes, we have understood that's because there is no real threat any longer. Uh, and officials telling us that the school is secure, the scene is secure, um, and there's no real threat or immediate danger to anybody um, within the vicinity. Although we are learning that about a mile away from the high school within the last few minutes, there is now another shooting uh, investigation underway. And we've got a live, we've got a crew ready to go live there in a few minutes. So we'll get that as soon as we can. Let's get you up to speed on what we know about the situation here at Austin East High School. This, of course, is a school that has been plagued by violence since January 27th. Four deadly shootings involving Austin East High School students. Um, no 
understandable connection between any of those, except that they were all Austin East High School students. All of them still actively under investigation. Only one case has suspects that have been named. Um, police still actively searching for information on these other shooting cases. What we know at this hour is they've got multiple agencies involved in this investigation. So we've got the ATF, about five agents who are inside the building uh, right now or at some point today have been inside the school trying to figure out who shot who. Remember, Knoxville police telling us that officers responded to a man who was possibly armed inside the school. Once they got inside, um, shots were fired. The officer was hit, expected to be okay. A male pronounced dead at the scene and then another male detained for questioning. So that's the status of the situation. That's what we know right now. Unclear who those two guys were. Are they students, uh, somebody else? We just don't know, but we do know all students have been reunited with their families. The sound except for acting. students who may have yes, been involved and involved is kind of the key ambiguous word here. The superintendent saying uh, only students who were somehow involved have been kept back. That would tell us that police are likely interviewing them, um, you know, trying to get a handle on what they may have seen or saw or heard. Um, whether or not those students are directly involved, we just don't know. That's information that we're still trying to get a handle on. The TBI is also helping as well. Um, the medical examiner, as you would imagine, in a case resulting in a death is on scene. Um, the governor is aware of the situation and monitoring it closely, and the state commissioner on education is following this as well. So all eyes on Knoxville as this investigation unfolds, but I think um, folks at home can agree with me. We are able to breathe a little sigh of relief knowing that this officer is okay or going to be okay who was involved in this shooting. Um, Knoxville's mayor, India Kincannon, telling us that she was able to meet with him and that he was alert and conscious and talking with her and seemed in good spirits. So yeah. that is good um, news. Um, Gwendolyn Ducree has okay. been one of our reporters on the scene. See, yeah. She's been talking to folks who may have seen and heard things. She's doing an interview right now, so we're hoping in a few minutes that we'll be able to chat with her live about what she learned in that interview. But the moment she arrived on scene, she says at least one person went running by her crying, frantic, visibly upset and shaken. Um, this is a community that is hurting. This is a community that is struggling to uh, cope with and address a rash of violence that it's been plagued by. Um, and she saw evidence of that as she initially arrived on scene. I think it's important to note that Gwen moments before she arrived on scene was five minutes away um, at a different situation where police, community officials, students were all gathered trying to work through some of this grief and collaborate on ways to combat the violence. And uh, it's just difficult to know that in the middle of that attempt, to heal and to grow and to move forward. They were called away from that effort to this officer involved shooting at Austin East High School, the very school where there has been so much pain and difficulty um, in the recent months. So that gives you a little context for how all of these pieces fit together. And then on top of that, within the last 20 minutes here, we have learned about another possible shooting one mile away from Austin East High School. We saw Knox County Sheriff's Office had their helicopter again in the air over that scene on Truslow Street, monitoring the situation. Um, it was reported as a drive by. We're still working to confirm the accuracy of that initial report. David Sykes, uh, one of our newsroom employees, just walked in to give me a quick update. What did you learn? Knox County Schools. Oh, and um, I'll just. I'll Okay, Austin East High School closed for the next two days, um, as you can imagine, so that this investigation can continue. And, you know, if you're a student, do you really want to go back immediately after something like this has happened inside of your school? So just coming from Knox County Schools, Austin East High School will be closed the next two days as this investigation continues. Um, you kind of think about, okay, what's happening inside the school right now? And we know that Knoxville police are there. We know the TBI is there. Um, but we also have learned during uh, an interview with one of the special agents in charge for ATF that they've got agents inside as well trying to figure out 
whose gunfire hit who in this offense or involved shooting. And that's always something that you want to be able to identify right off the bat and uh, establish in one of these investigations. So agents are inside looking at the evidence, the forensic evidence inside to try and figure out how many bullets um, were discharged, how many shots were fired, where yeah, did they hit, whose bullet hit who. Um, so that's all information that they're uh, working to ascertain right now. And that takes time. So not surprised to hear that Austin East High School is going to be closed the next couple days. Um, but this was interesting. We did learn from the special agent in charge just a few minutes ago that they could possibly have the answers to all of those questions as early as tonight. Whether or not that information is shared with us immediately is a different story, but they intend to have a pretty good idea of what exactly unfolded inside of the school this afternoon by tonight. That's a pretty quick turnaround, a couple hours. Um, I just want to quickly ask my producer, did Gwendolyn Ducree say that she was ready to share with us? Nope. Okay. She gotcha. Thank you. So Gwendolyn Ducree was one of our first reporters on the scene and said that um, she's been reporting for us throughout this ordeal, but she was just in the middle of an interview. So we're going to try and get with her as quickly as we can to learn what she is hearing on the ground there. But I do want to share an interesting piece of information with you um, about how the initial moments played out here at Austin East High School this afternoon. We are hearing from the Knoxville Fire Department who arrived on scene after getting reports of this shooting. Um, and they basically gave us a glimpse into what that looked like for them, for their paramedics. Essentially, they get on scene, they know that they've got patients who need medical attention and they've got to make their way to those patients. So they said that they worked directly uh, in cooperation with Knoxville police to get safely to those patients. So Knoxville police um, basically acted as a shield to those paramedics, made sure the paramedics were safe as they made their way from point A to point B to extract the patients. So kind of interesting to, you know, there's so much that goes into these um, to these situations, uh, so many people who play a vital role in securing the safety of the people involved. Um, so just interesting to hear that account from the Knoxville Fire Department about how their paramedics and crews played a pivotal role in responding to this scene. Again, if you're just joining us, we've got two separate situations happening at this hour. One, an investigation underway at Austin East High School where uh, a deadly officer involved shooting unfolded a couple hours ago. An officer, an Knoxville police officer is okay, but shot and a male pronounced dead at the scene. Knoxville police showed up to reports of uh, a male possibly armed within the school. That's what prompted this situation. Then within the last half hour, we've learned another shooting investigation, possible shooting investigation underway about a mile away from the high school. Um, on Truslow Street, it's unclear if there is any connection between the two situations. At this hour, we have no evidence to tell us that there is a connection. Um, I just want to double check. Guys, have you made contact with Zach Rickens? He is our reporter who was on the scene on Truslow Street where that second shooting investigation is underway. Got it. Did he share any information with us from the scene there? Cool. Okay, so we're still working to get some information from him and just bear with us. This is a pretty active uh, situation. We are up against a, a pandemic where we only have a certain amount of crews who are available to be in certain places and um, logistically uh, getting everyone in the right place. Uh, we've got them in the right place, but getting that information back takes a quick second. So we're going to get that to you as soon as we can. But let me just set the scene for you. What you're looking at here is footage shot from Pete Michaels, our eye in the sky of Austin East High School. Within the last half hour or so, this video is not live, but um, it really hasn't changed. The, the visuals of the scene have not changed. Not much has changed there. Um, there's not a lot of activity and really hasn't been in the last couple hours. Just a lot of cruisers parked while investigations play out inside. Um, Let's head down to Gwen. She is live for us now from uh, Austin East High School. Gwen, walk us through who you were just talking to and what you learned. 
Well, first off, I want to just let you know that we have a different vantage point now. Police have been able to let us closer to the school. We're right in front of Austin East right now, where you see community members, um, leaders right now talking um, right now and trying to figure out where do they go next, right? That's the question right now. Um, you know, I did just get a, I did just speak with um, Stanley Freeman Jr. He's one of the four Austin East students who was shot and killed in the span of six weeks. I spoke with his uncle who was out here saying that he was just around. Uh, we crossed paths and he was just telling me, you know, I said, how you doing, sir? And he just said, this just, it's a cycle and it opens up those wounds that we're trying to heal from. So you can only imagine right now what is what this is doing for those other families who it's it's hit them, you know, and they say that they are just fed up. One of the things that they have been trying to do, Stanley family, is ask for uh, more security here at the school. Um, when I spoke with them um, initially, they said they would really like to see metal detectors in this school. Um, I, I heard you all talking about those uh, clear backpacks, uh, but they say it's not enough. I, as you all were talking about it, I asked him about it. What do you think about those clear backpacks? Is that enough? Short answer, no. They want to see more prevention um, at this school. But you know what, Amanda, I have to be honest with you, no matter what, even though we keep talking about these tragedies that's happening to the school, you hear the same message. It's my school, it's my community, we're gonna be all right, we're gonna get through this, and I still love my home. Yeah, so you can just tell how strong the ties are right now, how strong the emotions are right now. You can see, Keith, if we can show how many people are rallied around right now, and I suspect these people are, they're gonna be out here for a while. Uh, they have a cooler and some water out here. And I'm sure more are probably going to come out here. Yeah, I mean, Gwen. We, I mean, I'm sorry. You were, no, you were saying okay. something. It's okay. You know, we we talk about this community. This is this is a neighbor. It's not just the high school. It's the entire community mm -hmm. around it. That yeah, um, mm -hmm. they're all intertwined, and they have been hurting for months and grappling with, mm -hmm. you know, anger and fear and struggling to figure out how do you how do you cope with what we've gone through and how do you fix it going forward and minutes before you were dispatched to this scene for this shooting investigation you were a five minute car ride away where members of the community austin east community and knoxville police were gathered trying to unify work together on solutions and that's the tough yeah. part about this is there was an effort underway to figure this out, right? To collaborate and figure this out. And they couldn't even finish that without having to pivot and turn their attention and focus to yet another example of violence in their neighborhood. And today, Amanda, I don't even know if they got started. You know, today was supposed to kick it off. I mean, yeah, they had that kickoff or the cookoff uh, this weekend, but today was supposed to be the kids getting involved. Uh, that collaboration you just spoke of, the kids were leading this this week um, at the Phyllis um, Wheatley Center this week. All this week it was supposed to be about the kids unifying um, a happy moment for them. And now this is their reality and what they have to talk about. I want to go back to and talking about the community that you mentioned. Whenever we talk about Austin East, we're not just talking about the school, we're talking about this community. And one of the things too that I was speaking with the mother earlier, if you all are just tuning in, I spoke with the mother who was very stoic. She hadn't spoken to her child who was at school here. She, uh, last time I checked, maybe about 10, 15 minutes ago, she said she still didn't make contact with her daughter. And I asked her, well, as a mother, you know, how is your sense of security right now when letting your daughter be here? And she said, you know what, she's coming back. She's a part of the generation. I went here, my grandmother went here, and we're gonna stay here, you know? So this community, although it keeps getting hit by these tragedies, they're not broken, you know? But the question is, where do you go from now? And that's what they're asking each when, other. Yeah, um, You know, a lot of people have their own ideas what that looked like, but they feel like there's only so much pressure. And uh, after speaking with Stanley's family, they're saying now that they know that this is now national news, they're hoping this is a wake up call for local leaders to step up and put, put excuse me, more preventative measures 
here in the school. And it certainly is capturing the attention of not just uh, folks across the country, but here in the state as well. Senator Bill Haggerty just releasing a statement saying that, yeah, we're watching what's happening. Our hearts go out to the folks at Austin East High School in the community and that neighborhood. Um, and we're going to provide as much assistance as we can. Uh, Gwen, can you talk to us a little bit about who we're going to hear from uh, the person that you just finished interviewing? Who is this? And walk us through what they kind of told you. Yes, again, that is Stanley Freeman Jr. He's one of the four Austinese students who was shot and killed um, in the vicinity of this school this year. Um, I spoke with his uncle who says he was in the area, stopped by, wanted to know what was going on. And he says now knowing what has happened at this school, he feels like all those emotions are rushing back. And again, he's putting the pressure back on city and school leaders to do something so that this doesn't have to continuously happen to this Austin East community. Let's hear what he has to say. Uh, it's, it's tough, you know, uh, uh, after seeing what happened here today and, and uh, you know, losing Stanley uh, uh, earlier this year to, uh, to, to gun violence, it's, it's really tough. and it, it's hard enough, but to know that some other family is dealing with this also now is it's really tough. How did you end up out here? Uh, I actually was out, you know, just uh, doing doing work in the yard, and uh, I seen a bunch of police come by, and I was like, you know, it just just it wasn't was normal, you know, to see like 20 cars flying by, and I, uh, you know, I called my uh, daughter, and and she told me that they was heading to Austin. This. How was she doing? Uh, everybody, like like I said, it's tough for everybody, you know. It's it, it been hard, it's been tough, and, and, and it's really rough on, uh, for for Stanley's father and, and, and grandmother, and it's it just been hard, you know, and and, and like I said, it, 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 it's just tough to see this happening today. And we're not live, and I, and I know you've been very transparent with me and not wanting to talk too much, you right. know, but are you comfortable with talking about the very thing that you wanted here at the school? I I really would have liked to see more intervention about uh, about school officials, uh, not only here at Austin East, but but uh, superintendent, to be more uh, could have been more involved. I, I, uh, they probably could have had uh, metal detectors here. Uh, we need intervention. Uh, you know, we, I think the kids have been asked to, to, to do enough. That's a that is. Um give you some context on that interview. If you didn't hear Gwen's explanation before we went to it, that is the uncle of Stanley Freeman Jr. He was the 16 year old who was shot while leaving Austin East High School. Um, and that is a death that fellow students witnessed. So he was driving out of the parking lot and uh, was shot and then crashed and students, fellow students watched his death. Um, his uncle talking to us now at this new scene of a deadly shooting saying really we've got to get serious about figuring this problem out finding out how we support our students and how we make the violence stop how do we get this violence to stop um, Gwendolyn Ducree is live from the scene at uh, Austin East High School she's moved to a new location which appears to be the front of the school where a large group of people are now gathering Gwen large people group of people a large group of people are gathering, Gwen, outside of the high school, uh, watching as this investigation unfolds. Um, tell me, did any of them see anything? What are you learning from them? Well, I know a lot of people got out here um, after the fact because it was all blocked off, but I'm joined now with Deidre Harper. Can you just talk to me about what brought you out here? And first off, how you doing? Yes, well, I'm a little shaken up right now. What brought me out here is I have a younger brother and sister who go to Austin East, mm -hmm. and I actually work about a mile down the street, so I'm hearing the sirens going down the street. It was about 40, 45 officer cars going by our office. So I, you know, immediately was wondering about the school, so that's what prompted me to come because I, I was concerned about their safety. Have you spoken to them? Yes, I have spoken to to them both of them are okay um you know physically okay but i can tell in their voice they're a little shaken up and mentally i just think you know that's going to be something to continue to talk about you know they went on lockdown one of the police officers went inside their room you know with their vest on with their gun just to check and see if they were okay but i couldn't imagine you know being on lockdown not knowing what's going on not knowing all this is going on outside and then the officer walks in a classroom and you don't know what they're there for so that was a little traumatizing for them 
did they say that they had any inclination that something like this was going to happen today? No. Um, she said that she thought maybe that might have been a fight that was going on in the school, with, which made them go on lockdown. But then she started hearing the sirens and the police officers in their, their cars, and so she knew that there was something a little bit bigger than what was going on. Um, and then I guess some people had started going live outside of the school. So now you're inside the school, don't know what's going on, and you're watching lives and seeing stuff outside the school with all of the police cars. So they were just kind of lost at the end of the day. Can you talk to me about what's going on right here? What are we seeing? Um, I, I can identify some uh, community leaders out here. What's going on? Yeah, so right now, a lot of the people that are out here right now are just wanting answers. They want to know what is going on. We have some parents here who are going, who have kids that are in the school, and they didn't get the notification until about 5.30 today that the school had went on lockdown and something had happened. So they're concerned with like, hey, What's up with the communication? Why did we not know? A lot of them are just expressing concerns. We've seen um, the mayor come out here and, you know, she was not able or I don't know why she didn't, but she didn't make a statement. They're wondering, you know, we, we were just wanting answers. It's like, what's going on inside the school? And we just want to talk to somebody to figure out, like, what's, what's the problem? And I do want to just be fair, just because the viewers are home probably did hear the mayor. Um, she did speak okay. with us, you know, I'm okay. just, but I'm just saying, I'm just clarifying here. But she didn't speak with you all. Did, did anyone speak with you all? anyone, any officials? Um, uh, yes, Evan T. Satterfield, who is the current Knox County School Board represented, representative, and this is uh, this school sits in her district, she did come out to give a statement to the to the community members. What did, what did she have to say? Um, she gave an update. She said so far one officer had been shot um, and is wounded. I guess he's healing or in care right now. Uh, one young girl uh, did pass away. She was shot as well. Um, and that they are going to go on virtual school for the next two days. Now we do have that confirmed, the uh, virtual school, so the school is going to be closed. What is your reaction to that? Do you think it's necessary? I definitely think that it's necessary. Um, this has been going on for a long time, you know, of course from the beginning of this school year with just some of the violence within the school. And I know a lot of commu community members as well have expressed that, like, hey, we went virtual, you know, a month ago, but we think that we need something more. I do understand that it's a tough situation when you have kids who thrive better in socially environments than they do on a virtual scale. But I think right now the need is to figure out what's best for the students and possibly not being in school might be the answer. I want to go back to the students, your siblings. What kind of conversations do you have with them now? Again, Right. It's, it's tough. You know, I'm just I'm listening to them and I'm just telling her, you know, I'm here if you want to talk. Like right now, I know they're saying there will be counselors available later. But a lot of the kids right now don't know how to even have a conversation with someone about how they're feeling inside. So I agree, you know, counselors are needed, but I'm just just trying to be a support system to her and to my younger brother that like, hey, if you want to talk about things, are you hearing things? Do you know anything um, so that we can just try to figure out how to get to the get to the problem quicker than what we're doing right now. What can be done at this point? Um, that is a tough situation. I think right now it's listening to the community members that are out here and really just listening to what they have to say, what they want to express. You know, they have kids, they have nieces and nephews. Some of them have, you know, are victims of some of the gun violence that have happened. So I really think we need to tap into listening to find the answers and the solutions on how to fix the problem. I was talking to uh, someone who lives a few blocks away and they were just telling me we've gotten to the point to where we got we got to the point to where um, you know we have to police ourselves we have to protect ourselves what do you hear when you or exactly what is it that you hear when you know that people will feel this way mm -hmm. I mean I hear those same things I think uh, one thing too you know with the, the security within the schools I think that's something that needs to be addressed um, you know I think so far, you know, I don't know how the kid, you know, was able to get into the school or where, you know, how that happened. But I knew, I know we need to look at the security system within the school to see how that could possibly be fixed. Um, policing ourselves and what to me what that means is we really need to hold each other accountable. We need to let everyone know as a people we are coming together and we are saying that things are not okay. And we just really have to be upfront with one another and really have those hard conversations so that we can all get on the same page because we are a community and when one is hurt, and we are all hurt and this is a school right here in this district in this community that has pride that a lot of people support and we really need to come together to figure out how we can continue to uplift the school and the people that are in this community right now 
And I do just for everyone watching want to just clarify. I know a lot of information is coming out all at once, but I know on our end we've only been able to identify and confirm um, one male um, victim in, in this situation. I want to circle back with you just about community. You know, you this is a school that has generations mm -hmm. of family, you know, who come here. What is your idea, ideal of this school? Mm -hmm. um, a lot of my family members went to Austin East High School. Um, I graduated from Carter High School. But this is just, this this school right here is something that a lot of people just take pride in. Um, it gets a lot of slack for, for things, you know, the, the academics, the lack of, the gun violence. But at the end of the day, this school is just so important to this community. And it's important to Knoxville, Tennessee. Um, it, it, it has... Um, good things that's happening you know there are doctors lawyers uh physics i mean there, there's a lot of good things that come out of this school and i wish that that was highlighted more i wish that resources were poured more into this school so that they can continue to grow um i know we we were just talking and, and i think that's the frustrating part is because we were just having conversations about a month ago when there was another uh violent act of how we can do better listening to the community listening to the kids but nothing tangible and yet actionable has been in place so it's almost like you feel like you're not being heard and no one is listening to you because because here we are a month later and we're dealing with the same thing. We're dealing with gun violence again. So it's just frustrating when there's lack of resources in the school, there's lack of resources in the community, there's development that is going on around everywhere, but uh, not where it matters most. And I, I know that the city knows that it matters most because we're expressing that. We're sharing those stories. You're here, you see the community members um, expressing their concerns about what is going on. So at the end of the day, I just really feel like we have to pour resources and money into this school because it is, it is necessary. Well, thank you so much. I really appreciate it. And um, if you can st stick around for me, I'll have a, a few more questions for you. Thank you again, Ms. Harper. Yes. I appreciate it. You. Um, you just heard Ms. Harper say this is community. And um, some of the things that she mentioned about this, the goodness of the school, we can attest to because anytime there is a story about making a difference, we've been here at Austin East. Um, this week alone, we know that um, a lot of people, um, those doctors and physicists that she just mentioned, business owners, they're all getting together Friday for a town hall meeting with the Beck Cultural Center um, to talk about their experience here and how they, the good that they remember Austin East. So you have a balance here, but right now we have to deal with this tragic news and that's what these people are doing or this is what this group is doing today, Amanda. Yeah, probably one of the most, yeah, um, one of the most uh, remarkable uh, things that she said, Gwen, was that she had siblings inside of the school when this was unfolding and the fear that they must have felt as officers were doing a sweep to make sure that there was no other threat within the school. I just can't imagine being a student and not really understanding or knowing what's going on um, and the fear that they must have been experiencing um, and the trauma that could be a result of that. So definitely something to, um, you know, just continue to think about the students who were affected as well in some sort of way. Gwen, we're going to let you get back to talking to some of the folks that are out on scene, see what else you can learn. We do want to turn our attention to another scene about a mile away from Austin East High School. Within the last hour, we've learned about another uh, possible shooting investigation underway at Truslow Street. Zach Rickens joins us live from that scene. Zach, we're understanding that um, this was initially paged out as a possible drive-by, uh, but no victim in this case. What can you tell us? What are you learning? Hi, Amanda. Yeah, I've been on the scene here for a little longer than a half hour here on Truslow Street, like you mentioned, just a couple blocks uh, from Martin Luther King and from Austin East High School, where um, today's earlier incident occurred. And uh, when I got to the scene here, uh, it was all roped off and, and um, police officers um, and sheriff's office were uh, unable to kind of confirm anything that was going on, but just kind of some things that I picked up on. Um, there was a, a white Ford Ranger um, uh, that, I, that appeared to have two, maybe three shots kind of fired out of the back windshield. Um, it didn't really look like anything was fired through the front of the windshield or I couldn't see any of uh, the other windows uh, knocked out uh, possibly from bullet fire. Um, but it, it did appear that a, a couple shots were fired from either that uh, white Ford Ranger or into that white Ford Ranger. And I can also tell you, Amanda, um, I was a little further down, obviously, the this, this scene was secured, so I couldn't see a whole lot, but um, two uh, white, I would say maybe 
25-year-old men uh, came out with, with police officers, and uh, one ended up leaving with a police officer in the back of the vehicle. Was not handcuffed, I do want to say that. Um, presumably going in for questioning or, or maybe was a, a possible witness here to this scene. And, um, now, when police did leave here, uh, maybe about 10 to 15 minutes ago, I did walk up. Uh, further, it's, the area is kind of on a hill, so you can't really see anything from where I was uh, from that vantage point. So I kind of walked up further towards that scene once it was uh, all cleared there, and, and you could see uh, a little puddle uh, that was kind of starting to dry up there uh, of gasoline. I could tell it was gasoline because I could smell it. It was kind of overwhelming, making me a little sick. I, I kind of just walked a, a little further from there, so um, it's still unclear. Um, when I first got to that scene, though, that white Ford Ranger was in the middle of the street, so I would kind of add two and two together here. I don't want to presume anything, but I do want to kind of put two and two together and say it's possible that that truck was hit in a different area. Now, the video that I did see and that, that, that I did get, excuse me, uh, of, of that vehicle being taken away by a wrecker service, um, I was focused on the, the windshield there. It was all splattered out, um, kind of shattered uh, glass. So I wasn't really focusing my attention on the body of the vehicle, but, you know, adding two and two together smelling some gasoline that vehicle uh, must have been hit uh somewhere there on the on the vehicle so um that's kind of what i have right now I people are kind of milling about going through uh the area and it, it's it's kind of eerie to be honest with you it, it's almost like nothing had happened here uh just down the street we are um if you're unfamiliar with the area a little east of the five points area we're, we're right near the beck exchange center and the mabry hazen house um so this this area uh really buzzing right now amanda um or at least was with activity and if you go just two three blocks down the road it, it still is buzzing with a lot of activity now. all right help me understand here zach is this scene uh, the video that we're looking at, at now is video that you shot and sent back to the station so we should tell people at home this is not a live image sure. of what's happening so help us understand is this scene active still or is it cleared it is not active anymore. Uh, the, the police and sheriff's office left, I would say, about 10 to 15 minutes ago, uh, took the tape. Um, you see in, in some of that video there, the, the crime tape, they did take that tape off and um, just kind of all, all left about the same time. They were, they were all uh, on about a block perimeter here between Center Ave uh, Southeast and Truslow Street Southeast. Uh, there was about a, a block uh, 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 roped off there, so they are not here anymore. But like I said, they did um, I one, um, maybe to 20 to 25 year old white male um, was in the back of a police car, uh, headed out of the scene with a police officer in, in the back of the vehicle um, about 15 minutes ago. And we see homes in the area. Did anyone come out of their home? Did there seem to be any anyone who had seen or heard anything that you were able to make contact with? No, you know some of these homes do. I, I don't want to say look empty, but uh, it, they look very quiet. It's just, just a very quiet area. Uh, not a whole lot of people walking around or or, or kind of milling about. But, um, you know, some people kind of poke their head out as I've been here for the last, you know, 40 to 45 minutes. Some people have kind of just poked their head out. I mean, it's, it's almost like they're, they're used to this at this point. It, this is like, oh, just another shooting here in this area. And it's just it's heartbreaking to kind of think of it that way. But you look at some of these people that, that drive by. I'm sending this video back through our news vehicle here, and, and you know, people are driving by, and it's, it's just like it's, it's another day here. You know, it's, 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 it's almost, it is heartbreaking. It's not almost heartbreaking. Um, it, these people are just kind of driving by here like, like they deal with this on a weekly basis because that, that is the, the fact of life. Did we see an ambulance at any point in time or any indication of whether or not there was or was not a victim? in this situation i did i, I did not here. get that indication at all um it, it did not seem like a frantic scene i do want to say that it seemed like it was a very secure even while uh an act while it was an active scene it didn't seem like a very you know frantic uh no fire department no paramedics uh this was strictly uh police that i saw here and and then the, the sheriff's office um uh, secured the perimeter there, so um, I do want to say that it doesn't it doesn't look uh, or appear that um, now I, I did get here a, a little bit after that call was made, so there's no telling. Um, we we obviously will keep you updated throughout the night, but um, I can tell you that that it it seemed like a very calm scene here, and it was pretty um, confined to a, a small little area here of about one to two properties uh, along the street. Okay, very good. And yeah, we see once again, Knox County Sheriff's Office had their helicopter in the air for that situation as well. Right. Certainly a busy um, 
A busy afternoon for law enforcement in Knoxville and Knox County. Zach Rickens reporting for us uh, live from Truslow and Central Avenue, the scene of a second shooting this afternoon. We're working to learn more about that um, at this point. No indication that that situation is connected to what's unfolded at Austin East High School. If you're just joining us, we want to give you a quick update on what's been happening at Austin East High School. An investigation is underway after an officer involved shooting. A deadly officer involved shooting unfolded there this afternoon. A Knoxville police officer shot but is expected to be okay is at UT Medical Center alert conscious and in good spirits according to the mayor and a second person that was involved in that uh, officer involved shooting at the high school is pronounced dead at the scene. A third person has been detained for questioning. It's unknown at this hour their uh, involvement or who they were identities. Um, positions, were they staff, were they students, were they people off the street? We just don't know. So we're working to learn that. Uh, Erica Lunsford is live for us at UT Medical Center where that Knoxville police officer continues to recover. Um, Erica, we heard from American Cannon earlier uh, that she was able to speak with him and with his wife and that he was in good spirits and said, you know, I'm really thankful and happy that I was able to be there to protect students. What are you learning at this hour? So far, Amanda, we have not learned any new details yet. We know that officer, like you said, is in good spirits. He's with his wife by his side. And also we know that he was struck at least one time today while at the school. Uh, and I, I want to bring something up. I know that you and Gwen had spoken out a little bit earlier how this week is supposed to be National Youth Violence Prevention Week. And I was out there yesterday as they kicked things off. And it was members of the Austin East community and surrounding areas Everyone was together and I spoke to many people who are just happy to see everyone getting along, you know, of all different races uh, and just playing. I, I spoke to a grandmother who was out there and said that it was just nice to see, you know, the kids playing without fear. And then it's just unfortunate that something like this happened today. But I want to toss to you what uh, Mayor Kincannon said earlier about how we just need that unity within the community. We all need to work on this together. Uh, KPD is doing their part, and so is the school. It's, it's a big challenge, and we're going to need everybody in the whole city to work on this together. And as we know, you mentioned too earlier, the officer, he's in good spirits. Um, as you know, Macon Cannon said, he's in good spirits. Uh, he was actually glad that he was able to be out there. So far, the scene here is pretty quiet. Uh, things are flowing as normal. Uh, visitors are coming in and out of the parking lot. There's not a heavy police presence outside of the emergency room here. But again, everything seems to be normal here. But I also just want to talk about how I'm going to toss to what Mayor Cannon said earlier again, talking about this uh, police officer and his condition. I thank him for putting his life on the line to protect uh, the students and staff at the school. And he said he'd rather that he be hurt than anybody else. And uh, he's in very good spirits. And um, looking forward to the successful surgery. Medical staff here. All right, and I'm going to be out here um, looking to and working to try to get more information uh, about this officer's condition. I'm just hoping again that everything is okay and he's in good condition, so he's expected to make it out all right. Amanda? All right, Erica, thank you for that update. We want to move into Casey Wheeler. She's in our newsroom just to give us a little bit of the backstory here. Casey, this is not just a situation that happened today. This has been weeks and weeks and weeks of violence involving Austin East High School students. This is just one more deadly shooting to add to the list. Uh, give us uh, quickly here because we've got about two minutes or so left to work with. Give us uh, a kind of a look back or the cliff notes on what this community has been dealing with since really January. Yeah, that's exactly it. Amanda, since January and I think it's important here to remember the names of the people we know that have died so far. The teenagers starting back on January 27th. Justin Taylor, he was just 15 when he was shot. He left in a parking lot. The second Stanley Freeman Jr just 16 years old, shot while leaving Austin East High School. The third, 15-year-old Janaria Muhammad, shot outside her home in Jamari and Gillette. He's a 15-year-old, shot and killed just last month. Real quick, I want to show you the map where all of these happened. Police have not connected these together. They've only made a couple of arrests in just two of those shootings. And, of course, they have not linked these shootings to what happened today, Amanda. All right, Casey, we appreciate that. Um, just to 
we got 40 seconds and we're going to let you go here just to recap quickly. The ATF is now investigating, uh, trying to figure out really who shot who, whose gunfire hit who. They hope to have information on that by tonight. We may not know that quickly. We'll keep you posted. No classes the next two days at Austin East High School as this investigation unfolds. And again, an officer involved shooting turned deadly at Austin East High School. No identity on the person who has died, but the officer is expected to be okay. We're going to be live on Facebook starting at 7. We'll continue our coverage there. We'll see you then. Have a great night and be safe.